awesome man of God. That he was a product of a prostitute. His mother was a prostitute. Surely he would have no. And on top of that, he was black. Don't say that word, Sharon. That's a bad word. Why? I'm white. <laughs> you see what I mean? How silly we get with things? You see what I mean? It's just, it's just nonsense. And here we go. This man surely has no chance. His mother is a prostitute. He's black. He's born into poverty in Florida. There's no way he's going to have a chance. But let me tell you something. You go home, you look him up online, and you see what God's doing in his life. He taught us how to have chocolate church one year. He taught us how to have black chocolate, brown chocolate, and dark chocolate, and milk chocolate. It was awesome. Surely this man had no chance whatsoever. Who are we to say, and who are we to declare to God that he's unfair? And who are we to say, folks, here is the issue. There was a point in time, and I'm going to use him as an example. There was a point in time where he had to ask and seek and knock and find out who Jesus was. Whether or not he had the right upbringing, whether or not he was born in some tribe in Africa or down in South America, whether or not anything, there was a point in time he had to ask, seek, and knock. And Jesus said, when you ask and you seek and you knock, he will reveal Himself to you. That is the difference. The answer to your questions of wondering, is it fair that someone is born into some tribe in Africa or South America or Indonesia or wherever it is that they're born into, is it fair they don't have the same opportunities that you and I have here in America? So surely God will allow them. No, because it's all about Jesus. Every bit of it. This whole world from beginning to end is about Jesus. He's before the beginning and after the ending. And Shannon, you say, you're just a pastor, you've got to say that. Because you're some religious person. No, I'm saying it because it's the truth. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Like it or lump it, my mom used to say. Remember that? Yes. You may not like it, but it's the truth. Jesus is the Son of God. Ask, seek, knock. How much asking, how much seeking, how much knocking are you doing on the heart of of God on the door of eternity. Here is something very awesome. God in God's mercy. There's a general call out. Then, in verse 30, they want to see another sign. Therefore they said to him, What sign will you perform here? That we may see it and believe you? What work will you do? Our fathers, these are Jewish people, and they have been taught the Torah. They've been taught about Moses. And it's awesome. Folks, let me tell you something. I'm going to take a little, a little, little bit of a, of a side, uh, a rabbit trail, if you will, in this message. We owe our Christian faith to the Jewish people, the Orthodox Jewish people. Why? First of all, the Bible says that Messiah must come and would come from Abraham and would come from the Jewish people. Secondly, they preserved the Scriptures in times that you could not even imagine. They preserved the Word of God. That is a miracle. Now, I know God used them, but here's what they did. They taught oracle. They taught their children year after year, generation after generation about the time that there was in slavery, the time that they were brought out of slavery, and on down. And here's where they're coming from. This is nothing new. This is nothing. They've been taught this. Our fathers, it says in verse 31, ate the manna in the desert as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. True. And so they're asking him, Jesus, what sign you perform for us because we have Moses. <coughs> That's what they're saying. Okay. 
Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is He who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Did you know, as a believer, speaking about myself or anyone else in this building today that calls himself or claims Christianity over their life, you did not come to God on your own. You have to understand there's a lot to be said about that. You had parents praying for you, grandparents praying for you, church pastors praying for you, people praying for you. But beyond that, you still did not come to God on your own decision. The Father gave you to Jesus. Did you know that? How does He do that? How did God... How does God do that? How does He make that possible? If you look at Matthew chapter 16 and verse 16, Peter makes a confession after Jesus asked His disciples about everybody else and what they're saying about the Son of Man. Who do they say the Son of Man is? And they answer Him. Some say Elias. Some say John the Baptist coming back and went on through. And then Jesus looks at them and says, Who do you say? Now, we get Peter's confession here, but this is a confession of the disciples, okay? Peter was a spokesperson for the disciples, for the twelve. Peter says, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus looked at him and said, blessed are you, Simon. And we go on and we get the word Petra, Peter, Locke. Okay, and you see all that. But if you look at verse 17, Jesus told Peter, there is no flesh and blood that revealed this to him, but the Father, which is in heaven, revealed it to him. You do not have your own personal revelation of Jesus without God giving you that revelation. Without God giving you to Jesus. Without God bringing you and causing it to happen. You say, well, how is that possible? How does the Father do this? The answer to that question, if you're asking it, is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the Scripture teaches us, you go back to John and look in 15, 16, and 17. Yeah. Jesus says, when he, the Comforter comes, will guide you into all truth. He'll first of all convict you of sin and righteousness and judgment, and then he'll guide you into all truth. You cannot find truth in the Scriptures without the Holy Spirit. Amen. Without the Holy Spirit leading you and teaching you and guiding you, you cannot find truth. You see, that's where, going back to the first story I told you about Brian Fisher, my Man, I was getting mad, and I was spiritually getting mad at this guy. Why? Because he was a devil, and he was trying to use God to prove a point. And what was happening there is, the man did not have the Spirit of God in him, and he was twisting the Word of God. And the man did not have truth. He did not know the truth, and he was not free. The only way you can be free and the truth to make you free, the only way you can know truth and be guided in truth is by the Holy Spirit. God brings you to Jesus by the Holy Spirit. He brings you to Him through this way. A general call goes out to the whole world from beginning to the end of time that you must believe in God and His only begotten Son. But you to come to Him, to know Him, is only through the Holy Spirit. Oh, Pastor, I don't agree with that. I don't believe the Trinity. I don't believe in this stuff like you do. And you need to read your Bible if you have one. You need to read and have some understanding, but the only way you can have it is through the Holy Spirit. Now, the hardest thing for us to have understanding, we see, and if we go on and read, we're going to wrap this up. In verse 
34, Then they said to him, in response to what he said in verse 33, The bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Here's what verse 34 says. Then they said to him, you see, he's trying to get them to think about heaven and God and spiritual things, and they can't get their minds off of worldly things. They're only looking to worldly things. And he said, they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. They were wanting another experience like the children of Israel had in the wilderness. We want to see that again. Give us this bread. You know, you say this, and you give us this bread always. Here's the test. Any pastor would love to hear someone. Oh, man, I love that. This person wants to know. It almost sounds like they want to know about this bread, okay? They want to know about this bread. They want to know what, what's so great, man. It's, it's awesome when a teacher hears this from a pupil that wants to know. You ever thought about how great classrooms would be if the, all the kids came to school for one purpose, and that's for learning and understanding? You ever thought about that? We don't go to school for that. Hey, I was guilty. That's all a social thing. Isn't that the reason why we go to school? We want to have social life. I gotta have friends. You know, and we gotta we gotta do stuff. We maybe, we maybe play sports and stuff. Nothing wrong with that. But what you ever thought about how surprised the teacher would be if all the students came in and said, "Open your books and teach us, teacher. We want to learn." Some of you are laughing. <laughs> because it doesn't come natural to us, does it? No. It doesn't. It doesn't come natural to us. And so it almost appears in this verse in 34 that they said to him, Lord, give us his bread always. It almost appears like they really want to learn. Here's what's going to happen. He answers them in verse 35. He said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Remember the conversation in John chapter 4 that Jesus had, almost identical in a way, and that he had with the woman at the well? Remember that conversation about the water, the living water? And then we all want that water always, so I'll never have to come back here again and get water out of this well. Remember that? Give me this water. They're saying the same thing. Give me this bread. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. He who believes in me shall never thirst. 